going to write each equation in slope-intercept form and then find the slope and y-intercept. In order to get y by itself, what do I have to do? Jake, what do you think? You got to, like, when we worked it out like earlier, we had to get y by itself, and then we got to do, like, we got to do, like, 3x, and that one part, we got to divide it on both sides to get y by itself. So. All right, so I got to get rid of this 3x. So I have yes. to bring this 3x to the right side. How do I get 3x away from here? How do I get rid of 3x? Divide it. What's the opposite of 3x? Negative 3x. I subtract 3x from both sides. 3x minus 3x leaves me with y. 0 minus 3x is negative 3x. And there's nothing left for me to do. y is now by itself, so I have nothing else to do. In this equation, what is the slope? Negative 3x. Not negative 3x, it's just negative 3. Negative it's the number that is in front of the x. Now, for this one, what is my y-intercept? Negative 3. Negative 3 is my slope. My y-intercept is 0. Dog, why is my y-intercept 0? There's nothing there. There's nothing for my b. My b has to be my y-intercept, and if I'm not adding anything to the negative 3x, well, then I know that it's 0, which means it passes through the origin. origin. All right, number 2. No, I'm sorry, number 4. I have to get y by itself. How do I get rid of 2x? Get Subtract 2x. <coughs> that leaves me with negative y equals negative 2x minus 15. Okay, my 2x is cancel out on the left, so I'm left with the negative y. When I subtract 2x from the right side, I cannot combine those terms, so I just have to write negative 2x minus 15. Is y by itself? No. no. Why? Because it's, because it's a explanation. negative. I can't have a negative y. I've got to get rid of that. What coefficient is in front of that y? One. Negative, negative one. one. To get rid of negative one, I divide by negative one. Negative y divided by negative one leaves me with y. What's negative two divided by negative one? Two. two. Negative divided by negative is positive. And what's negative fifteen divided by negative one? Positive fifteen. So. My slope is what? Two. Your slope is what is in front of your x. And my y-intercept is what? Fifteen. It is the number that stands alone. <coughs> Try number five. All right, in order to get y by itself, we have to get rid of this x. How do I get rid of that x? Negative x. I subtract x from both sides. When I do x minus x, that leaves me with negative 5y. 10 minus 8 minus x. I cannot combine those terms, so that leaves me with negative x plus 10. Is y by itself? No. No, I'm multiplying negative 5 with y, so what do I do to get rid of the negative 5? Divide it. I divide by negative 5 on both sides. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 leaves me with y. What is the coefficient for x in the right side of the equation? One. Negative 1. Negative 1. What is negative 1 over negative 5? What's negative 1 divided by negative 5? 5. five. It's not 5. It's 1. It's 1 over 5. 1 over 5. 1 over 5. Because see, I've got a negative 1 over a negative 5. These two negatives cancel each other out. 
that leaves me with one fifth. So my slope is one fifth, and then what's ten divided by negative five? Negative two. Negative two. So my slope is one fifth. My y intercept is negative two. Questions about that? Yeah. Yes. All right. When you're getting y by itself, do you know, uh, I don't understand. All right. It's going over my head. It is the same thing as if I had 4 plus 3y equals 16. We've had problems like these before where you have to get y by itself. You have to solve for y. I would subtract 4 from each side. What's 16 minus 4? 12. And then I would divide by 3. What's 12 divided by 3? So y equals 4. I got y by itself. I left y on the left side by itself, correct? Yes, ma'am. Doing these are the exact same way. Okay. I had to do the inverse operation here to get x by itself. I mean y by itself, I'm sorry. You have to do the inverse operation here to get y by itself. Okay. Yes, All right, so another example we might have is being told to write the equation for a line that passes through each pair of points in slope-intercept form. So we're given points. We're not given the slope. We're not given the y-intercept. What's the first thing we need to do? Y minus y over x minus x. This is how you find slope. If I'm given two points, I take one y, subtract the second y, Take the, whichever y I pick first, that's the x I pick first. 4, subtract 3. What's 6 minus 4? 4. 4 minus 3? 2 divided by 1. My slope is 2. When I get that, I can go ahead and write down y equals 2x. Now I just have to figure out where is this graph going to cross the y-intercept. How do I do that? How do I find the y-intercept? Well, we did a uh, plug. Plug in x and y. Plug in x and y. I take one of these ordered pairs and plug it into the equation y equals mx plus b. Because I know the slope and I know an ordered pair, so now I'm going to solve for b. Whereas before we were solving for y, now we're solving for B. We're trying to figure out where does this graph cross the y-axis. So pick any point. It doesn't matter as long as it's one of the two from this problem. I've got 4 equals 2 times 3 plus B. What is 2 times 3? 6. Is B by itself? No. No. What do I have to do? Just write 6. Subtract 6 from both sides. What's 4 minus 6? Negative 2. Negative 2 is your B. So your equation is Y equals 2X minus 2. Does that make sense? You find your slope first, and then you plug in your slope in an ordered pair in order to find your Y-intercept. And then you just plug them in to your equation. Okay? Question. Try number seven. All right, so for number seven, first thing we have to do is find the So that gives us y negative ten minus y negative one over. 2 minus negative 1. Whichever y I pick first, that's the x I pick, pick, pick first. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, but whichever y you pick first, that's the x you have to pick first. What do I do when I subtract? What is a subtraction problem? But it's adding the, 
adding the opposite. So if I have a subtraction problem, I need to change the subtraction to addition and take the opposite of the second number. What is negative 10 plus 1? Negative 9, because they have different uh, signs. I subtract and take the sign of the bigger number. Same thing with 2 minus negative 1. Change your subtraction to addition. Take the opposite of the second number. 2 plus 1 is? 3. And negative 9 divided by 3 is? Negative 3. So I have the first part of my equation. I have y equals negative 3x. Next... I'm going to take one of the points and plug it into the equation y equals mx plus b because that is slope-intercept form. My y is negative 1. My slope is negative 3. My x is negative 1. And I'm solving for b. What is negative 3 times negative 1? Positive 3. Is B by itself? No. No, what do I do? So you gotta subtract. What's negative 1 minus 3? Negative. Negative 4. That is my equation. Alright, for number 8, of course, we have to find our slope. That's y minus y over x minus x. Negative 20 minus 5 over negative 9 minus 6. I'm subtracting, so I have to do the additive inverse. What's negative 20 plus negative 5? Negative 25. Negative 25. What's negative 9 plus negative 6? Negative 15. What will go into both of those numbers? 5. 5. Negative 25 divided by 5? Negative 5. Negative 15 divided by negative 5? Negative 3. A negative over negative. These negatives cancel out and leaves me with a slope of 5 thirds. I have the first part of my equation. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to plug in these coordinates for y equals mx plus b. Doesn't matter which point you pick, just pick one of them. I'm going to pick 5. 5 equals, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick 6, 5. 5 equals 5 thirds times 6 plus b. What is 5 times 6? 36. What is 5 times 6? 30. 30 divided by 3? 10. 10. So 5 equals 10 plus b. I got to subtract 10 from both sides. What's 5 minus 10? 5. Negative 5. That is my equation. Now quickly look at number 9. This is the equation for a pizza. 8 is my y-intercept. So what, where am I going to graph that? At 8. At 8 on the y-axis. My slope is 2. Now pay attention, the y-axis is by 2's. The x-axis is by 1's. So my slope is 2. That means I'm going to go up 2 to the right 1. And I have to do that for 0 to 5 toppings. So I'm going to do that for 0, 1 topping, 2 toppings, 3 toppings, 4 toppings, 5 toppings. This is the graph for that equation for this situation. What does the 8 mean? The word of the y In this situation. For what type of pizza? The zero type $8 for no toppings. And what does the slope mean? It goes up as it has more toppings you put on it. $2 per topping. What does that sound like? Math. Sounds like constant rate or unit rate because the slope is the rate at which a graph is changing, correct? Yes, ma'am. 